Rub up your engines! Marky Mark, Scotty, when I fill my Honda CRV, the pump always stops filling, even though it seems like the tank isn't full. Is it okay to add it after the pumps? No, it's not. Modern cars have what are called EVAP systems. It's an anti-pollution device so that fuel vapor doesn't pollute the atmosphere. When I was a young mechanic, they didn't have that. They just had gas caps. And when it got hot and the gas expanded inside the gas tank, it would just vent out fumes. Well, now they have EVAP systems. And if you have the automatic pump at the station stop pumping, and you keep squeezing more in, you can end up pumping raw gas into that EVAP system, and you can ruin the EVAP canister. Some of these EVAP canisters are under the gas tank. You got to drop the tank to change them. It can cost you seven, eight hundred dollars to swap those things out. Oh, don't do it. Now, if you got a 66 Mustang or something, it doesn't really matter <laughs> because they don't have all that crap on them, but all modern systems have them. It's Flater, and Flater says, hey, Scotty, I'm thinking of swapping my 2016 Mazda 6 GT for the 2019 Kia Stinger. I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not. What car do you recommend? You're talking about swapping a three-year-old Mazda GT and getting a brand new Kia Stinger. You're going to lose your shirt when you buy a sporty car and you get rid of it when it's three years old, you're gonna get nothing for a trade. Now, if you don't mind that, go right ahead, it's your money. The Kia Stingers are kind of interesting, fast little cars. And the Mazda 6 GTs are kind of fast little cars. If you don't mind wasting all that money and you wanna do it, go right ahead. If you like driving them, go road test one. If you really like it, go right ahead. But realize, you're gonna lose your shirt if you buy another car every two or three years. In my father's day, you could get away with that. Cause the new cars were only a thousand dollars and you'd get 500 bucks trading and pay a thousand for another one. You weren't losing that much. Today, you're gonna lose your shirt doing that. I'd say if you're going to do that kind of stuff, buy them used. <laughs> Save yourself a lot of headaches that way, a lot of money too. Big Pen, Big Pen says, Scotty, I'm looking to buy a used V8 F-150. I want to do a muffler delete and a cold air intake and a supercharger for more performance and better miles per gallon and slightly larger tires. What do I need to do and is it a good idea? No, it's not a good idea. <laughs> You know, unless you're talking about a real old one that had a carburetor on it, you can do whatever you want then because they're easy to adjust. But modern vehicles are all fuel injected. And if you do all that stuff, you're going to have to pay a real pro to reprogram the computer. And if you're going to do a supercharger, you're going to have to rebuild the engine because if you supercharge a used engine, odds are it's going to blow it from the extra pressure. You're getting into, you know, expensive things. If you remember the original War Road Warrior where he's in a junkyard and the guy says, got a little sign behind him and it says speed is just a question of money how much do you want to spend it can get very expensive doing that stuff and for some little vehicle like that if it's an older truck I don't know if it's worth the money doing it those V8s got plenty enough power the way they are now if you want to really zoop it up and have fun spend a ton of money go right ahead you can have a riot with it just don't realize you can't just buy stuff bolted on and drive away modern vehicles don't work that way Stephen Crowlin Stephen says what are your thoughts on the Datsun 280ZX Okay, those were great sports cars back in the day. Datsun was the first company really, now it's called Nissan, to make a reliable, fast, fun to handle sports car that didn't fall apart and cost a small fortune. They sold a lot of those things. Those were really fast. They turbocharged some of them, made them even faster. They were great in a day. Now, the problem is, they're really old now. And I get some customers to buy the old ones and decide they're going to do them over. Now they have to realize that as old as those are, a lot of times they're going to have to do the wiring over, do the computer system over. It can get very, very expensive. They were great cars in the day. They were really an innovative sports car. They went really fast. Out here says, Scotty, I got an 85 V6 2.8 Fiero. It's not working before it stopped. It started making some popping backfire sounds. Go on the freeway at high speeds. The transmission wouldn't shift right. Those Pontiac Fieros, they were bizarre cars. They had the engine in the back, but they had the radiator in the front of the car. They almost all had overheating problems because the front of the car was pointed, and since the radiator was there, it's at an angle and it had fans and if the fans ever broke it wouldn't suck enough air in the engines to overheat and blow the head gaskets. Those things are so old there's a zillion reasons that they can pop. The first thing you want to fix is the popping. 
Now, it could be ignition coils are bad. It could be the engine starting to blow a head gasket. It could be a lot of things. You want to test the compression first, see if the engine's worn out. If it's not that, check the ignition system. That's often what makes them pop. And you can also check the timing chain. Those things have timing chains in them. And if the timing chain stretched, then the timing gets off, and that'll make them pop too. You can check that with the timing light. Those are the first things I tell you to check. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.